Chapter 9. The Race Searchlight sprang forward with such force that little Willie couldn't hang on. If there weren't, as it wasn't for the lucky grab, he would have fallen off the sled for sure. In what seemed only seconds, little Willie and Searchlight had traveled down Main Street, turned into North Road, and were gone, far, far ahead of the others. They were winning, at least for the moment. Stone Fox started off dead last. He went so slow down Main Street that everyone was sure something must be wrong. Swish! Little Willie's sled flew by the schoolhouse on the outskirts of town and then by the old deserted barn. Swish! 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 The other racers followed in hot pursuit. Go! Searchlight! Go! Little Willie sang out. The cold wind pressed against his face, causing his good eye to shut almost completely. The snow was well packed. It was good to be the fast race. It was going to be a fast race today, the fastest they had ever run. The road was full of dangerous twists and turns, but Little Willie did not have to slow down as the other racers did. With only one dog and a small sled, he was able to take sharp turns at full speed without the risk of sliding off the road or losing control. Therefore, with each turn, Little Willie pulled farther and farther ahead. Swish! The sled roared rounded a corner sending the snow flying little willie was smiling this was fun at about three miles out of town the road made a half circle around a frozen lake instead of following the turn little willie took a shortcut right across the lake this was tricky going but searchlight had done it many times before little willie had asked mayor smiley if he was permitted to go across the lake not wanting to be disqualified as long as you leave the town heading north and come back on South Road, the mayor had said, anything goes. None of the other racers attempted to cross the lake, not even Stone Fox. The risk of falling through the ice was just too great. Little Willie led increased, lead increased. Stone Fox was still running in last place, but he was picking up speed. At the end of five miles, Little Willie was so far out in front that he couldn't see anybody behind him when he looked back he knew however that the return that the return five miles going back to town would not be easy the trail along south road was particularly straight and very smooth and stone fox was sure to close the gap but by how much little willie didn't know doc smith's house flew by on the right the tall trees surrounding her cabin seemed like one solid wall Grandfather's farm was coming up next. Then Searchlight saw the farmhouse. She started to pick up speed. No, girl, Little Willie said. Not yet. As they approached the farmhouse, Little Willie thought he saw someone in Grandfather's bedroom window. It was difficult to see with only one good eye. The someone was a man with a full beard. It couldn't be, but it was. It was Grandfather. He was sitting up in bed. He was looking out the window. Little Willie was so excited he couldn't think straight. He start, started to stop the sled, but Grandfather indicated no, waving him on. Of course, Little Willie said to himself, I must finish the race. I haven't won yet. Go, searchlight, Little Willie shrieked. Go, girl. Grandfather was better. Tears of joy ran down Willie, Little Willie's face, smiling face. Everything was going to be all right, and then Stone Fox made his move. One by one, he began to pass the other racers. He went from last place to eighth, then from eighth to seventh, then from seventh to sixth, fifth, sixth to fifth. He passed the others as if they were standing still. He went from fifth place to fourth, then to third, then to second, until only Little Willie remained. But Little Willie still had a good lead. In fact, it was not until the last two miles of the race that Stone Fox had got his first glimpse of Little Willie since the race had begun. The five Samoids looked magnificent as they moved effortlessly across the snow. Stone Fox was gaining. He was gaining fast, and Little Willie wasn't aware of it. Look back, Little Willie, look back. But Little Willie didn't look back. He was busy thinking about Grandfather. He couldn't hear him laughing and playing. He could hear him laughing and playing his harmonica. Finally, Little Willie glanced back over his shoulder. He couldn't believe what he saw. Stone Fox was nearly on top of him. 
This made little Willie mad, mad at himself. Why hadn't he looked back more often? What was he doing? He hadn't won yet. Well, no time to think of that now. He had a race to win. Go, searchlight, go, girl. But Stone Fox kept gaining si silently, steadily. Go, searchlight, go. The lead Samoy had passed little Willie and pulled up upon searchlight. Then it was nose ahead. But that was all. Searchlight moved forward, inching her nose ahead. Then the Samoyed regained the lead. Then Searchlight. When you entered the town of Jackson on South Road, the first building had come into view about a half a mile away. Whether Searchlight took those buildings to be Grandfather's farmhouse again, no one can be for sure, but it was the first time that she had poured on the steam. Little Willie's sled seemed to lift up off the ground and fly. Stone Fox was left behind, but not that far behind. Chapter 10 The Finish Line The crowd cheered madly when they saw Little Willie come into view from the far end of Main Street, and even more madly when they saw that Stone Fox was right on his trail. Go, searchlight, go! Searchlight forged ahead, but Stone Fox was gaining. Go, searchlight, go! Little Willie cried out. Searchlight gave everything she had. She was a hundred feet from the finish line. When her heart burst, she died instantly. There was no suffering. The sled and little Willie tumbled over and slid again in the snow for a while, then came to a stop ten feet away from the finish line. It had started to snow. White snowflakes landed on Searchlight's dark fur as she lay motionless on the ground. The crowd became deathly silent. Lester's eyes looked to the ground. Miss Williams had her hands to her mouth. Mr. Foster's cigar lay in the snow. Doc Smith started to run out to little Willie, but stopped. Mayor Smiley looked shocked and hopeless, and so did Hank and Dusty, and so did the city slickers, and so did Clifford Snyder, the tax man. Stone Fox brought his sled to a stop along little Willie, he stood tall in the icy wind and looked down at the young challenger and at the dog that lay limp in his arms. Is she dead, Mr. Stone Fox? Is she dead? Little Willie asked, looking up at Stone Fox with his one good eye. Stone Fox knelt down and put one massive hand on Searchlight's chest. He felt no heartbeat. He looked at Little Willie. The boy understood. Little Willie squeezed Searchlight with all his might. You did real good, girl. Real good. I'm real proud of you. You rest now. Just rest. Little Willie began to brush the snow off the Searchlight's back. Stone Fox stood up slowly. No one spoke. No one moved. Only eyes were on the Indian, the one called Stone Fox, the one who had never lost a race, who now had another victory within his grasp. But Stone Fox did nothing. He just stood there, like a mountain. His eyes shifted to his own dogs, then to the finish line, then back to Little Willie holding searchlight. With his heel of his moccasin, Stone Fox drew a long line in the snow. Then he walked back over to his sled and pulled out his rifle. Down at the end of Main Street, the other racers began to appear. As they approached, Stone Fox fired the rifle into the air. They came to a stop. Stone Fox spoke. Anyone crosses this line, I shoot. And there wasn't anybody who didn't believe him. Stone Fox nodded to the boy. The town looked on in silence as Little Willie carried searchlight, walked the last ten feet, and crossed the finish line. The idea of this story came from a Rocky Mountain legend that was told to me in 1974 by Bob Hudson over a cup of coffee at the Hudson Cafe in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Although Stone Fox and the other characters are purely fictitious and my of my creation, the tragic ending to this story belongs to the legend and is reported to have actually happened.